This is a true story. The reconstructions are based on an original air traffic control transcript. In 1998, off Canada's east coast, a modern passenger jet, run by one of the world's best airlines, catches fire at 33,000 feet. In the final six minutes, communications from the cockpit cease. It's burning already! Then, the plane plummets into the ocean. Two hundred and twenty-nine people are dead. What caused the fire is a mystery. Many of the vessels uh, reported to the Canadian Navy vessel standing by on scene that they were finding bodies and making repeated requests uh, for more body bags and get the bodies that were... Now, available. after one of the largest investigations in aviation history, the complete story behind the loss of Swiss Air Flight 111 can finally be told. It's a wake-up call for the entire airline industry to ensure that what happened aboard Swiss Air would never happen again. September 2nd, 1998. Swiss Air Flight 111 prepares to depart New York's JFK International Airport en route to Geneva, Switzerland. The aircraft is a McDonnell Douglas 11, or MD-11, a model first developed in 1986 as a highly automated, modern improvement on the antiquated DC-10. It is considered one of the most reliable large passenger jets in the skies. And Swiss Air pilots are among the world's best trained. Okay, after start checklist. Um, engine anti-ice. Not required. Roger, not required. Take off. Swiss Air 111's pilots are Captain Urs Zimmerman and First Officer Stefan Lowe. Swiss Air 111, hold short, 3-1 left. Zimmerman encourages an easygoing atmosphere in the cockpit but he is also known for his by-the-book precision. When not flying, he trains new pilots for Switzerland's national airline. Uh, flaps and slats, flaps set 15 degrees. Set at 15. On board are 215 passengers, 12 crew, and the two pilots. Most passengers are French, American, or Swiss. Among them is 23-year-old Stephanie Shaw, on her way home to her parents in Geneva. Stephanie uh, was blessed in many ways. She was uh, physically very attractive. She was an intelligent girl. She, uh, the reason she went to New York was that she had been invited to become a member of the world economic forum which is based in Geneva and she wanted to have this trip um, before she joined. She was a darling, she, an absolute darling. Swiss Air 111 Hemi, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Roger, Swiss Air 111. In the spirit of safety, the Swiss Air pilots push the throttles forward together, ensuring that no single pilot can botch a takeoff. VR, V2. Swiss Air Flight 111 lifts off the runway and makes her way northeast toward the open Atlantic. For the first 15 minutes after takeoff, there is no communication from Swiss Air 111. It is an unusual small detail that would later baffle investigators. Atlantic air traffic is handled by a remote center in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Almost half an hour after takeoff, Captain Zimmerman makes his first communication with Moncton. 
Moncton Center, Swiss Air 111 Heavy, good uh, evening, level 330. Swiss Air 111 Heavy, Moncton Center, good evening. Reports of uh, occasional light turbulence at all levels. Moncton, Swiss Air. It is a perfectly normal beginning to a transatlantic crossing. In first class, Swiss Air passengers are among the first in the world to have a personalized in-flight entertainment network. Though now common, the system is an innovation in 1998. Passengers can choose their own movie, browse the internet, and gamble. They uh, evaluated the market and they thought that introducing a modern in-flight entertainment system combined with a gambling system so that passengers actually can use their credit card and gamble during long-range flights um, would make them more attractive. This luxury would be the source of controversy to come. Yeah, what is that? Go have a look, I'll take the controls. Roger, you have control. First Officer Lowe investigates the area near the air conditioner vent. Harmless smoke traces from air conditioning systems are common on commercial jets. see anything, Ers. And there's nothing up there now. You hail for me, Captain? Stefan and I were sure we smelled smoke a few seconds ago. Can you smell anything? I smell it too, yeah. Could you smell in the cabin before you came in? No, definitely not. They agree the air conditioner is the likely culprit. Can't see it or smell it anymore. Air conditioning, is it? Yeah. Please close it, thanks. Behind the sealed panel, the pilots cannot see that the problem is getting worse. Less than 45 seconds after smoke disappeared in the cockpit of Swiss Air 111, it's back. Zimmerman follows Swiss Air procedure. He makes plans to divert the plane for the nearest place to land. Find the closest place to land, Stefan. We'll need the nav charts from the library, uh, also weather data for the area. Boston's close. It's not doing well at all up there. Zimmerman radios air traffic control in Moncton, New Brunswick. Moncton Center, Swiss Air 111 Heavy, good evening. United 920 Heavy, Moncton Center. The controller exchanges information with another aircraft before responding to Swiss Air. Other aircraft calling, say again. Swiss Air 111 Heavy is declaring pan, pan, pan. We have smoke in the cockpit. Uh, request um, uh, immediate return to a convenient place, I guess. Boston. Pan, pan, pan is an international term used to notify air traffic control of an urgent situation, one step below declaring Mayday. You said to Boston you want to go? Uh, I guess Boston. Uh, we need for some weather there. Uh, we are starting right turn.